A pixel is a numerical value, and an image is a grid of those numerical values arranged in two dimensions. Each number corresponds to a particular brightness level. As the numerical value increases, so does the corresponding light intensity. As the number grid is made up of points of different light intensities arranged in the two-dimensional space, the human eye can interpret it into an image. An image must have a defined numerical reference range. In other words, the complete range of light intensities must fit within the values assigned to black and white. In PixInsight, in an image in floating-point numerical format, black corresponds to zero and white to one. However, images can also be represented using whole numbers. For example, if we use a numerical precision of eight bits, there are two to the power of eight, that is 256, possible light intensity values between black, which will be zero again, and white, which will be 255. This precision is good enough for some uses, like displaying images on the screen. But cameras use more precise numerical ranges. The most widely used is 16-bit precision, where black is zero and white is 65,535. To read the pixel numbers and display the image correctly on screens and other devices, any image processing software needs to know which values correspond to black and white. Setting the numerical reference range is therefore a crucial step in designing any well-structured image format. The main advantages of digital photography over analog are often thought to be its higher image resolution and sensitivity. However, the key difference between the two is actually the linear response of the digital sensor when it detects light. In a digital sensor, the signal produced is directly proportional to the amount of light entering the sensor. In other words, if we double the luminous flux, the electrical signal also doubles. If the flux increases tenfold, the signal increases tenfold as well. But in image sensors with a non-linear response, like the human eye or photographic film, the relationship is not directly proportional. The signal produced changes in different ways depending on the intensity of the light. For example, this response curve shows that the signal increases quickly when the luminous flux is low, but the signal increase slows down as the amount of light increases. This simple fact means that we can capture the true essence of what we are photographing in a way that was completely unachievable with traditional film photography. By working with linear images, we can eliminate all instrumental artifacts to construct an image that contains only the light from the objects. With linear images, we can also apply a uniform color calibration, ensuring that hues remain consistent regardless of an object's brightness. In modern astrophotography, the concept of linearity is so important that workflows are always divided into two main blocks, before delinearization and after. Despite playing such a crucial role, linear images are not visually meaningful as they are. The human visual response is not linear, so we cannot see this sort of image correctly. This photograph is a good example. But if we delinearize the image with a mid-tones adjustment, the brightness range aligns more closely with human vision, revealing all the information present. Although linear images are always extremely dark, we can make the information in the shadows visible by adjusting the brightness in a linear way. This is similar to what digital cameras do when you change the ISO or gain settings. However, this still isn't exactly how the human eye sees the world. We've made the shadows visible, but now the brighter areas are completely saturated. But if we delinearize the original image, the scene becomes more familiar and lifelike. These examples show a characteristic that initially appears to contradict what we observe on screen. 
a linear image has too much contrast. To illustrate this, let's compare a three-dimensional representation of the image of this galaxy before and after delinearization. In its linear state, there is a significant difference in brightness between the nuclei of the stars and galaxies and the rest of the image. In the delinearized image, the overall brightness ratio is more balanced. PixInsight introduced the concept of a workflow with linear images, which was previously impossible in other astrophotography software. However, this leads to a paradox in practice. We need to work with images that our eyes cannot see. To overcome this challenge, PixInsight also introduced one of its most vital tools, Screen Transfer Function, or STF for short. STF marked a turning point in astrophotography image processing because it enables us to apply processes to images when they're in a state that the human eye cannot understand. It works by modifying the contrast of the data displayed on the screen without touching the image data itself. Thanks to STF, we can apply processes that only work properly when applied to linear images, such as gradient correction or color calibration. STF has become so essential to astrophotography that it is objectively impossible to carry out rigorous image processing without it. Thank you.